Well, hello everyone. Today I'm here to recommend to you incredibly atmospheric books. A good atmosphere in a book can suck you in and transport you to a whole other place. And today I'm specifically focusing on atmosphere within homes themselves, because I think some homes can, ha can be a character in and of themselves. So I have quite a few books to recommend to you. Let's just dive right in. The first book I want to recommend to you is a thriller. It's Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. This is a book that follows a woman who is essentially homeless. She's found out that her boyfriend was cheating on her. She decides to leave and she needs to find a new place to live. And she discovers um, that the Bartholomew, one of Manhattan's most glamorous and secretive buildings, is offering positions where you can house sit, essentially apartment sit. And she takes the job and she goes to stay at the Bartholomew. Now, strange things start happening. There are strange rules that she needs to follow. And what I loved about this book was it had very, very Rosemary's Baby vibes. The whole time that I was reading this, I kept imagining the apartment within Rosemary's Baby and all of the characters in that movie. I haven't read the book, so the movie. The apartment itself also very much sucked me in. There is strange elaborate wallpaper and you feel claustrophobic in this apartment and there are strange like dumb waiter um, things that are on the, in this apartment that are just odd and odd places and you definitely feel like you are being spied on or that our main character is being spied on being watched throughout this and so there is this atmosphere it's not a cozy atmosphere but it's definitely an atmosphere uh, a creepy one I will say so I definitely recommend Lock Every Door. It's probably my favorite Riley Sager to date. Another book with incredible atmosphere is The Witch Elm by Tana French. This was my first Tana French. This is a standalone that she wrote. And this follows a man living in Ireland who is attacked one night after going out with his buddies to a bar. He is brutally attacked in his apartment and left with various injuries he decides to go and live with his uncle Toby who is battling cancer and he goes to live with his uncle Toby in his uncle Toby's really big well I imagined it as being this big house um people got together at uncle Toby's house every Sunday uh it was a place where he had a lot of memories as a teenager he would go there with his cousins and family and stay there for the summers and he goes back to live there and no sooner does he move back in than a skull is found in the witch elm tree out back and that tree has been there for decades and it was the coziness in some ways of this home that has so much history like a childhood history felt very atmospheric in that way and it, it, it being completely shifted and turned on its head once the skull is found and you know the police are there they're digging up the backyard and it's like the destruction of this atmospheric place that's meant to be so so cozy uh, that I thought was incredible the writing was incredible I listened to it on audio oh my gosh 100% my favorite mystery of all time. Now, we before we move on to the other, I believe there are four more books, I definitely needed to mention Skillshare. As you know, I am working with Skillshare this year and they are kindly sponsoring this video. Now, when it comes to atmosphere, you don't get more atmospheric than interior design. So I am currently taking an interior design course right now. It's called Interior Design Basics. Simple Steps to Your Perfect Place by Lauren Cox. And Lauren is from the Havenly Group, which is, I believe, a design um, firm. Creating an atmosphere that speaks to you and is you almost 
is the name of the game when it comes to interior design. That is what they do. That is their bread and butter. And I'm finding the course so interesting. I definitely have a style of my own, but she in this course helps you to decide what your style is and how to get that style, but not in an overbearing kind of way. Now, if you're not into interior design, that is okay. Skillshare has like hundreds of courses, literally hundreds. If you're into things like watercolor, you could take a watercolor class. You can take photography classes, uh, design classes for graphic design. There's so, so many classes out there and it's specifically um, structured in a way that's best for learning. There's literally no ads with Skillshare, which is very nice. And the first 1000 people who click on the link in the description box below will get a free month to Skillshare. So I hope that you will enjoy that. Now back to the atmosphere of books. Now an incredibly cozy atmosphere that I found in a book was Blue Monday by Nikki French. Now this is the first of a whole series. We follow Frida Klein, who's a psychotherapist, and she somehow gets involved with all sorts of mysteries, crimes that she herself feels compelled to get involved with. She's not necessarily trying to solve them, but she kind of ends up doing that. You know, she kind of ends up working with the police through this series. And what I love about the Frida Klein series is yes, the story, the plots, all of those things, the mysteries, but also Frida's home is the most cozy hygge home in the world, in the literary world. Like Frida understands hygge in a way that most people don't, I feel like. The baths that she takes, the gatherings of friends and family that kind of show up on her doorstep and she ends up hosting, uh, even the foods that she eats in this home, you feel like you're walking behind her, following her around her house um, as she settles in for the night. I just adore this apartment that she lives in so, so much. And I would love to visit this magical, mystical, imaginary place. For a gothic atmosphere, I absolutely loved The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. I feel like I recommended this to everyone and anyone who says that they like haunted house stories. Um, this follows a family who were very wealthy and have subsequently, after the war, lost a lot of their money and their enormous home, Hundreds Hall, is starting to crumble. And we meet a doctor who goes to the home because um, one of the maids, I believe the only maid, has uh, hurt themselves in some way and he has to go and he creates a relationship with this family. Now he has an intimate understanding of this home because his mother used to work there as a servant. And so he understands it in that way. And he understands the home in its grandness and also understands it as it's crumbling. And the atmosphere in this book is literally taking this home and kind of you're flashing backwards to these grander times. And this family wants to live in these grander times in this grand home to present day where it's like no one's up keeping this enormous house because no one can afford to. I really enjoyed it. Definitely atmospheric. And there's a ghost in it. So <laughs> yeah, so good. Next is The Dutch House. You guys knew that this was going to be on the list. The Dutch House by Anne Patchett follows a brother and sister who lived in a huge home that was filled with glass windows. Um, called the Dutch House. They moved there um, when they were little and their father decided to renovate this house. So growing up, they kind of lived in the midst of renovation and then um, their mother leaves them and he remarries a woman who is not very nice to them. Um, and they live there with this woman and her children and it's very awkward at times. There's something about this home that this 
brother and sister duo uh, keep being drawn back to. They find themselves parking in front of the home over and over again, just parking out front and talking, knowing that they can't go in, but being drawn to it. And the description of this home with all of the glass work, um, their, their father distinctly decided that he wanted it to have this amount of glass and and you can just see the home and I, I don't know if you guys have a home like that for you where you're just drawn to. For me it's my nanny and poppy's house that they lived in, lived on. When I was growing up we used to go over every Sunday and I have many times driven by and just sat in front of their house and cried or thought about my grandparents and like relived my childhood kind of sitting out front so this book meant a lot to me especially about place and atmosphere of a home that can just make you feel at home i i hope everybody has that experience in their lives um yeah i need only say one word for the next book and that is manderley rebecca is uh, written by the queen of atmosphere uh, Daphne du Maurier and Rebecca follows a woman who marries a man quite quickly. She falls in love while she is on a trip. They marry and he brings her back home to Manderley. Now he lived there with his wife who is now deceased, Rebecca. And our main character who is never named uh, is constantly compares compares comparison wow it's constantly comparing herself to Rebecca because the servants loved Rebecca more than her and Rebecca was just perfect in every way and you find yourself following our main character through the rooms of Manderley and she is exploring it in a way that is trying to explore Rebecca. She'll never meet Rebecca. And so she's trying to understand this woman through the belongings of the home. And I I loved that. It also was quite cozy because the grounds of Manderley are incredibly gorgeous. They've got these like big dogs that are roaming around the house, lying in front of the fire. Just like you can just feel yourself there. I think it's a great book to read in the summer, I will say. In any case, oh, I could not do this video and not mention Rebecca. Okay, last but not least is a thriller with a really weird home. This is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. This is based on the book by Henry James, The Turn of the Screw. Um, so this follows a woman, Rowan, who... Uh, comes across an ad where she would be taking care of, I think, two or three girls. It's a nannying post. And so she goes to stay at this home. And the parents of these kids are architects. So they've taken this really old house and added all of these modern features to it. So it's got one section that's old and then one section that's got tons of glass added on. It's a smart home. It's a really cool home. Like you can adjust the shower so it's just perfect for you. So anytime you walk into the shower, it will like recognize that it's you and set it to like your perfect setting. It sounds like a dream. However, things start going wrong. The parents go off for a business trip. Things start turning against our main character. The smart home seems to be working against her. There is also like this garden outside that is slightly dangerous. I will not say why, but it's slightly dangerous. And I found it very, very intriguing. Uh, and, and the atmosphere of the home, like I definitely felt like I was like looking over my shoulder kind of for this main character, worried for her, but also wanting to take that damn shower myself. So in any case, the Turn of the Key was a really good one as well. Those are all the books that I wanted to share with you with tons of atmosphere. Let me know in the comments below if you have a suggestion for a book that has a home like that's so atmospheric that you felt like you were in the home. I'd love to know and I will talk with you very soon. 
Bye, guys.